So I have an interesting item for you today. This is the Porta Video VCR from 1985, model number VP3100. It's a little bit of a correction. This is actually not a VCR or a video cassette recorder. This is a VCP, a video cassette player. Since it doesn't actually record, it only plays videotapes. And like the name Porta Video suggests, this is actually a portable VCR or VCP. And this was a common sight in the 1980s when you need to lug around a, a video cassette player. So in the early days of VCRs, a lot of people didn't actually have players. They would go to their favorite blockbuster or their favorite movie rental house. Uh, they would rent movies and some of them didn't actually have a player to play. And so many um, uh, shops would rent out video players so you can take it home and play it at home. And then when you return your tape, you would return the player as well. These were also popular with businesses and companies who like to uh, perhaps have a portable VCR to bring to meetings or let's say a conference if they had advertisements they would like to show in the background uh, during presentations. So let's take a little look at this today. So right in front, you do have a power switch here to turn the unit on. You have a little light. There's also this uh, DEW light, which I'm not exactly sure what that does. I haven't really seen it come on, but uh, we do have the play right here. Rewind, fast forward. We have a still, which is like a pause, stop, uh, video clear. Uh, we have a counter indicator right here, which you could set to zero. And then you also have an eject button that doesn't require power, but you could eject the tape, put it back in. You could play the tape while this little uh, lid is on as well. Now it does come in this protective case for carrying. Uh, you can remove it if you kind of flip it around. There's a couple of kind of round bolts right here, which are a little bit hard to get off. You need uh, like the needle nose pliers to get those off, but they're not that tight. And then when you do uh, open up the case, you can see um, how the VCP actually looks inside. Uh, you could see a little bit of the interior of the case. They have some pads there to protect uh, the unit uh, for transport. And so uh, this is what it looks like inside the case. And then coming back to the exterior of the case, you can see the bottom does have some feet. There's some uh, ventilation in the case itself. And then I already kind of showed this, but the back kind of pops open. You can store the power cable here. Uh, yeah, you could also secure it with a little clip here and run it through this hole right here. You do have two RCA jacks right here, one for audio, one for video. So just the standard uh, plugins right there. And when you plug it in, uh, the cables come right underneath there as well. Uh, again, there's a little spot here for the power cable. And then you also have a um, coaxial connection right here, which you can put right in here. When I originally got this, this was actually uh, kind of had a little bit of a plate there. I think it was meant to be popped out and I did kind of cut it out as you can see here. So you can actually put uh, the coaxial cable there and then shut everything like that. And then just on the lower right of the auxiliary connection, you do have a channel select, either channel three or four. So uh, when you do use your auxiliary uh, connection, uh, you actually have to select which channel, uh, either three or four, the signal will go into your TV. And here's the label in back, which shows the model number as well as the serial number. And you can see right there, it was made in Japan.
Shutting the back lid, you do have a little label instruction about how to connect uh, the port of video to your TV. And then right on top where you put in your tape right there, you do have instructions how to operate the machine since quite often you're renting it and uh, you don't, you might have lost the manual, etc. This has an easy explanation about how to operate the machine. And then just inside the lid, some cautionary tales about shocking. Okay, so let's test this thing out and see how well it plays. I have it connected to my uh, portable Sharp uh, LCD TV. I have some 16 candles right here. We'll go ahead and open up uh, the top here. Pop it open. Stick it in. Shut the lid. And let's see, the power is on. So it does uh, read the uh, VCR and it is selected on channel three. So let's just go ahead and hit play and see what we get. Guy, a black trans a pink guy. And there you go. Oh no. It's a nice, it's a nice quality video. The sound I did notice is a little bit off um, uh, with newer VCRs, the sound does sound better on the tapes, but you could uh, go ahead and hit stop, fast forward, and you can see the counter does advance, uh, stop, rewind, it works, stop, play, And there it goes, it's back on. Now I did notice that when it's playing, you can't just hit fast forward and it does that kind of fast forward. It actually stops and just st starts fast forwarding at a normal pace. So you can't view the video in fast forward or reverse. And then, so it's back on and we could hit pause and it pauses fine. So there you go. I'm not exactly sure what the video clear is. Um, I don't really want to hit it because I'm afraid of, well, it shouldn't cause any problems, but it did now and nothing seems to happen. So I'd have to look that up. I can't really find a manual on this. So um, many of these things like that and the DEW light, I don't know what they do, but it does seem like it works well. Depends on how much you paid me. And there you go. That is the Porta Video uh, model number BP3100. And yes, in 1985, this was considered a portable unit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.